It's actually the last wood piece I did. It was a commission. I was doing it in 2012 when my big health event with the kidney failure happened and I uh, quit working on it because I was in the hospital. And uh, at that point it sat for a number of years and started a deterioration. It would start half done and the commission that I was doing it for, the lady kind of wanted kind of wanted it done and finally I just gave up. I was going to take it to the burn pile and burn it and uh, I just couldn't do it because the Rapunzel was carved and, and she was so beautiful. And, and the story behind the Rapunzel, this is a very r empowered Rapunzel and uh, she, um, she doesn't really need to be rescued. Rapunzel was white and I kept painting her over and over again and it just didn't work and then a lot of times I paint from dark to light so one more time I was going to paint her and straighten it out and when I had it dark I realized that she just was not a Caucasian that she was a dark-skinned woman and uh, she bears a great resemblance to one of my uh, health care workers that uh, has saved me many times but I hadn't met her when I carved it. And uh, there's a creature at the top, uh, kind of like a gargoyle sticking its head out of a stone-lined window, and uh, that was supposed to be a bear, but it never would turn out to be a bear, but it looks a lot like the owner, Lisa's dog. And, uh, it's kind of nice that it's here at a place where people get to feeling better. There's some abstracted creatures at the top and, and at the very top is a little bitty yellow bird. But it was uh, it was a lot of fun and it's kinda kinda nice that I finally got to finish it even though I didn't really get back as strong as I was before, but we got some kind of resolution. And it has a home. I've had some real inspiring things happen to me in the past um, four and a half years. It's kind of brought me back to life. Okay, this is the very first large wood sculpture I made. Show me the place. After living here in Beulah. Where you want your slave to go. Show me the place. I've forgotten, I don't know. Show me the place, for my head is bending low. It's a lightning struck tree, so it's rotting pretty quick. It's not going to be here too much longer, but it was done in 03. Show me the Most place. people carve bears Help me roll with standing up with their paws in the air, but I wanted Show to make something friendly, and, and I wanted the face to be where you could cold. see it, so I put the... Put the bear coming down a mountain. Where the words became a man. Show me the place where the suffering began. I didn't know at the time, but it was made to commemorate her son who died when he was an Eagle Scout. The only stipulation she gave me on the commission was she wanted something that was a spin-off or referred to a Native American totem, but she didn't want a totem, you know, exact reproduction, which I was so glad because I don't have it dropping a Native American 
blood in me and I don't want a copy of their work, but I think I grew from it. The troubles came, Hello? I saved what Hello? I could see. A thread of That's light, a particle. Just said she wanted the moon on there, the eagle, and the sun. And so the sun is on the shoulder of the eagle, the moon is on the other tree, and it's being held up by an owl, which seemed appropriate. Then she wanted animals of the valley, so there's a beaver under the uh, owl, and then there's an elk or a deer or some kind under that, and then a bear holding everything up, and the bear's chest makes a heart. Above the bear, there's a very small face, obscure face. That's the spirit ancestors. On the left is a mountain lion with her cub underneath her. On top of her, beneath the eagle with the sun on his shoulder, is the storyteller. And there's a hole where his mouth is. There's a bowl in the back, and birds live in that birdhouse. So as he, uh, as the birds fly out, that's his words coming out. It's kind of hard to see. There's a little squirrel, and then there's a salmon biting the tail of a raven. see it coming back to life. Okay, this carbon was done for Sandy and John O'Brien. There's four squirrels, three uh, coming out of a hole in the tree, and uh, another squirrel running down, and then there's a poor old she-bear up at the top trying to sleep, and they've woke her up. And uh, the next-door neighbor is like kind of like me. He's an irascible old Beulah bachelor. They had me carve three X's and O's at, on the butt of the bear that faces his window. So it's it's got a lot of good old hillbilly folklore to it. And then a lot of people can't see it, but at the bottom they have a, a beaver, uh, and that's what's making the holes in the tree. And uh, the title was, There Goes the Neighborhood. A few years later, bears playing in a tree. These folks were kind of like me. They had a lot of Irish blood in them. The Celtic braid, the never-ending knot design at the top and the bottom. Lots of shamrock. Uh, the colors at that time I was using were rather dark. We're getting ready to repaint this and bring it back to life. Okay, I'm letting go. I'm beginning to see a uh, point of light on the horizon. It's uh, getting larger. Oh, it's, it's, it's coming quicker now. It's, uh, it's really going. Catherine went to a China when they first opened their borders. In the pictures she took from that, she had lots of pictures of dragons. And she said, I want a dragon, but I don't want a dragon like the East. But I don't want the conventional St. George kill, you know, killing the dragon or a bad dragon. 
So it's a happy dragon blowing flames and holding roses. That was the commission. Client, the tree, and the spirit, wherever you believe in, that's what made this, not just me. So, it's a happy collaboration, I hope. She was supposed to be a fast car. I was trying to be a successful carver, and to do that, you've got to carve things fast and very, be very succinct and know what you're doing. And so I was going to try to make a, a maybe a 30 or one hour carving. And I started carving it, and uh, I was blocking in the wings, and the wood was rotten on one side, so I had to cut it off. And so that's when it started. So then I, uh, I just started, I stopped my original plan and just started removing all the rotten wood from the piece of wood and it was beetle kill. And when I got all the rotten wood out, the basic shape of the, as the angel it is it is today was the, all that was left. And so, after about a hundred hours, my 30 minute carving was done. So it certainly wasn't uh, marketable for a $45 chainsaw carving. So I decided to keep it for myself. The angels were supposed to be the intercessors between this world and the spiritual world. And so that's why one wing was supposed to be up and the other was supposed to be down. And I said, well, that fits. <laughs> the wood was rotten, so <laughs> I'll just use that. The rot had taken out all the places that I needed to take out so that it would be engineered so it would be sound. So that's when I say, I don't take credit for the thing. <laughs> I, think, I think there was a lot of help going on. And on the back of her head, of her hair, the shell that is there, that's a symbol of the pilgrim. When people were on pilgrimages during that time period, and even up to this day, uh, for spiritual treks across Europe to go to different holy sites and cathedrals, they were subject to be robbed and preyed upon by local villains as they passed through different areas. And so what they would do is they would embroider that same shell on, under the lapels of their jackets and when they saw someone that they thought they could trust they'd quickly flip their lapel up and that person would see that indeed they were a pilgrim and they would give them shelter and food and uh, and guide them on a safe trail a lot of angels have real you know ideal young lady beautiful young lady faces almost doll faces and and that's good but my angels, I tend to make them with a, a face of a more mature person because I think of them as being, you know, eternal or semi-eternal beings. So, they, you know, maybe they don't look young forever. And, uh, and I know I've been in trouble many times, and it sure must have been angels or something that came to help me. And uh, 
when you're in such a situation, I don't know that you want a Barbie to show up to help you. I think you want somebody that's been around. The beauty of wood carving is that it'll go back to nature pretty darn quick. And that's kind of nice because that makes room for the next wave of artists to come along and make something. <laughs> Well, her strength and the joy of just being alive and, and having emerged from a tremendous challenge ordeal and to keep her dignity and to be just proud to be alive, just happy, <laughs> and sharing it with everybody. So, yeah, she's one of my heroes. Both the good and the bad I have flying in the fire And I feel in my heart That the seed has been sown It is something quite new It's like nothing I've known No.